Ever since the attack of COVID-19, the government of India has announced a series of steps for uh, humanitarian purposes, for the lowest level of the pyramid, for uh, uh, NDFCs, for, for housing finance companies, uh, for a whole host of sectors. But one sector which uh, actually provides uh, almost five to six crore in terms of jobs, the real estate sector, which can generate uh, business and consumption for almost 300 industries. I mean, when you think homes, you think asbestos sheets, paints, cement, uh, household appliances as a person buys a new home. Uh, it's endless the amount of uh, uh, stimulus the real estate sector can give to the entire economy. This sector has not received any help from the government. So today we are discussing with a bunch of experts what the government can do to pull the real estate sector out, which along with it can uh, provide a huge fiscal and growth stimulus to the entire mm -hmm. economy. Joining me to discuss this are Gitambar Anand, the chairman and mandant of ADS Infrastructure and a former president of the Credi. Also with me, Silesh Puranik, chairman and managing director of Puranik Builders. Also, he's joint secretary of the Credi Action Committee. And Ramesh Nair, who is in a, in a sense a think tank, the CEO and country head of JLL India. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, well, if I can begin with uh, you, Mr. Gitabar Anand, uh, you know, what, what is the situation on the ground? Uh, we did see some bit of recovery coming after uh, 2019. Uh, you know, the RERA was kind of stabilizing and people were, uh, you know, being able to find some kind of funds uh, to complete their projects. How severe is the situation? Is it that the industry needs 1 lakh crore, 50,000 crore? What does the real estate industry need in terms of money? Yes, of course, there's been a liquidity crunch for the real estate sector, but that is true for all sectors today. If you were to ask me, then you have to complete all the dots in the circle if you want things to kind of start moving because right now, even in projects that were doing well, there are cash flow issues because there's been a job uncertainty. There have been pay cuts across sectors. People who we supply to, when I say supply, I mean people we give homes to are people who work in the aviation sector, they work in the hospitality sector, they work in the auto sector. So there's been pain all over and therefore our entire play has obviously been affected, even the projects that were doing fairly well. What needed to be done like the MSME sector was given a window of 3 lakh crores to borrow. Their consumers are we. We are their consumers. Mm -hmm. And if they are to borrow, they must have some kind of uh, assurance or comfort to know that when they supply material to us, we have the money to pay them, which is not the case today. So what has happened? They didn't borrow because they knew they would have to give us stuff on credit. We didn't have money from our customers because there's been a job insecurity, pay insecurity. We don't have liquidity coming in from the banks because suddenly the banks have put brakes on all kind of funding. So the yes. circle is not complete. So what should have happened was, if some money, a window was given to the MSMEs with a sovereign guarantee, a similar window could be provided to the real estate sector. Because like you said, the real estate sector in today's world is a low hanging fruit. After the COVID crisis, people want to buy that home. There's an aspiration, but there's a the lack of confidence on uh, their paying their EMIs. So had we been given some liquidity by the banks who are already sitting on our projects, then maybe we could have get started the wheel moving. And the MSME sector who supply to us, we could have assured them that, look here, we have money. Uh, some money we've been given by the banks. So suppose we have an existing uh, line of say 50 crores. Had we been extended another 20 or 30% of that existing line, with a sovereign guarantee whether the NBFC or the banks would have got comfort to lend further, then this wheel would have started moving. Because the customers today have stopped paying installments because they are also insecure about their own salaries. Do you think there are enough uh, willing buyers? For instance, today, uh, even not taking the scheme into account, the SBI home loan is, I think, below 7%, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, at least uh, uh, for some older loans uh, which are linked to external benchmarks, the loan uh, interest has fallen to below 7%. Do you think there are enough buyers because people are so scared of their own future? No, in fact, uh, uh, thank you, Lata. But in fact, I think because people are scared of their own future, that's why there are more buyers in the market. So I think uh, this COVID crisis has established one thing that home is your safe and a secure investment 
and it is something that you can do it unlike the gold or unlike the share market it has no use for their livelihood and that consumer sentiment has been positively shifting towards opi you know but better way than we have ever imagined so i think we are in for a bright future but see what needs to be done in this demand and in this supply side and that can be done only and only by government so supply side we have to work community so we have been six seven years of a difficult time for real estate and after you know going to successive bottom then we have this kind of bouncing back we have encountered one more bottom and we are going down in this case what government needs to do is that make that environment or act as a catalyst for both demand side and for both supply side so when we have said to government that you know give us one time debt restructuring it will help not only developers but it will help hfcs and npfcs and banks and it will help end users also so imagine if you take a project to 50 or a 60 or a 80 percent done and then you have no money to complete that and even customers are dying away or or maybe postponing that project is stuck we use well this stuff in that you have as make available this kind of funding yes government has done but it is very less so we are talking about a large figure of tax crore or more because this kind of funding is needed for the for the supply side for the demand side lot of things government has you know repo rate is slow down announce home loan that a repo rate for a one or a two year period why can't government do that uh, announce moratorium for one or two years why can't government do that ask and make it compulsory for lenders to lend both to real commercial reality which is developers as well as that is construction finance last mile funding or uh, funding as well as the end user which is customer so if rbi can do that if finance ministry can do that take real estate out of negative risk identify people make stringent norms but make this funding available if we want to correct that government we understand that as fiscal consideration and all that but there are many other things tax break uh, gst break or yeah. that's what i was coming to all that i think government can do and i we feel it should do yeah. and act as a catalyst you are not only real estate but it will help in reviving our let me get uh, ramesh into the conversation ramesh have you noticed anything positive in terms of the worst getting over uh, either in terms of commercial real estate because you know this work from home also is maybe a bit overdone and uh, uh, are you seeing any commercial deals getting done are you at least seeing an arresting of the bad news what are the prices and uh, markets telling you see on the commercial front uh, lata we are already uh, seeing uh, things bouncing back uh, a lot of uh, occupiers uh, who had put uh, their decision making uh, on hold or on the pause mode uh, in the last uh, one month have uh, decided to go ahead with the deals uh, the cities which opened up earlier uh, earliest was uh, bangalore where we are already seeing a good amount of uh, rfps uh, which are being uh, issued uh, but the worry uh, in commercial is uh, people coming back to work is still uh, kind of uh, limited uh, because uh, there's a lockdown extensions uh, in uh, many uh, many cities but on the residential uh, front uh, what we are seeing is uh, i think uh, we need to uh, as an industry uh, market uh, the benefits of residential real estate uh, which is uh, the tangibility the predictability the less volatility compared to financial asset classes uh, tax deductions the psychological comfort one gets investing in real estate the ease of leverage i think all these things need to be marketed a little uh, better uh, lata i also believe that uh, we need to educate uh, the customer that uh, today the market uh, is lot more end user driven uh uh and in terms of uh, uh right sizing right pricing than uh, than ever before you spoke about it lata the interest rates uh, today are at its lowest in the last 15 uh, years uh, and we have already seen what of a price correction which is which has to happen in the last 4 uh, 5 years uh today developers uh, who do not have the holding capacity have started offering some decent uh, discounts and freebies uh, to attract uh, customers and mm-hmm. customers also need to be educated that uh, new launches uh, are going to significantly reduce because uh, of the liquidity uh, constraints in the market issues. because of, uh, because of uh, migrant labor uh, issues so overall uh, i think uh, this is uh, a good time uh, for the home mm-hmm. buyer uh, to go uh, look at a deal and maybe uh, in the next 6 uh, months uh, closes uh, dream home 
Well, uh, Mr. Anand, Mr. Puranik and uh, Ramesh, just hold on to that thought. We need to take a quick break. We are back in June. Welcome back uh, to this special episode of uh, Revive Real Estate, Revive Consumption, uh, the uh, series that we have been hosting along with Credi and uh, CNBC TV 18. I've been speaking with Mr. Gitambar Anand, the Chairman and Manager of ATS Infrastructure and former President of Credi, Mr. Uh, Sailesh Puranik, the Chairman and Manager of Puranik uh, Builders, Joint Secretary at Credi Action Committee, and Ramesh Nair, the CEO and Country Head of JLE India. Gentlemen, thank you very much for waiting by. One of the problems that arises not for the home buyer, but uh, for larger fund participation has been the ready reckoner rates. Uh, uh, what's your sense, uh, Mr. Anand? Uh, is that something that you have been, your credit has been pushing with the governments of all levels, that if the ready reckoner rates are more realistic, then at least larger funds will be willing to step in and uh, hold the property till the uh, retail buyer comes in? Unless I actually the ready reckoner rates actually are not so much of a you know problem. yeah problem with the funds they are more of a problem with us and our customers because you know there's a section 43 CA of the Income Tax Act wherein it is it uh, assumed as deemed income if you are selling below the ready reckoner rates and both the seller and the buyer are then uh, liable to pay tax on that uh, deemed income notional income so, so the banks and financial institutions have to today understand that they will have to take more risk on businesses which were already doing well before this uh, situation came up and they have to aggressively start lending and supporting businesses also they have, have to rationalize the rates of interest that they've been charging historically especially to real estate because those rates those irrs were not sustainable they were not tenable and today a lot of problem that the sector is facing is because a lot of us are leveraged and we borrowed money to buy land at exorbitant irrs and today, where we stand is that we have this legacy of high cost borrowing and there's no one to actually find, give us a solution. Now, private equity funds is somebody we are waiting for, but that will take time. But what is happening is that today, if the public sector banks have got capital and they're just risk covers because I don't want to quote anybody, but there was a statement earlier saying that, you know, we are flush with money, but there are no takers. Nobody believes that. There are takers, there are businesses who need capital. And if you give capital to those businesses, you will see a revival of the economy. You will see a revival of the job market. So unless and until I, I somebody doesn't give my home buyer comfort. Now my home buyer today, that aspirational home buyer says, forget everything else. I must have a roof over my family's head in such troubled times. But I don't have the confidence to take on the burden of an EMI yet in these times because things could get worse. My job, I could be laid off. Maybe I get a pay cut of 50%. What would I do when I have to pay my EMI for the next six to 12 months? So my home buyer has to be given comfort there. And once my home buyer gets covered, they start buying. You will see the entire circle start moving because that I must also stay this year. I don't see people traveling for a holiday for a long time. Yes. I don't see people going to a hotel for a long time for, for leisure. I don't see yes. people uh, traveling by air unless and until extremely necessary. So what is it that we can kickstart today? The housing industry. So let's do it. Uh, coming to uh, Alesh Pranik, do you think a restructuring of loans is called for the one-time restructuring that everyone has been asking for? At the moment, uh, if a two-year restructuring is given, do you think the real estate industry uh, can cross the abyss? No, I think another is, uh, that is the first and foremost one of that we are asking. And uh, what has happened is with this three-month becoming that we will be becoming nine months. It is almost become uh, impossible unless uh, a one-time restructuring is given. As I said earlier also, this will not only benefit developers, it will benefit all the NPFCs, all the HFCs and all the banks. Uh, ultimately, it will benefit the end user or the consumer. Uh, Ramesh, uh, what is your sense in terms of uh, appetite for from the funds? Uh, you know, everything can come. There, there is a trigger point, and we have seen the trigger point in 2003. All hell was breaking loose, and then suddenly we saw interest rates have crashed. So we, you could get a home loan for maybe 6% or thereabouts. Uh, real estate prices had fallen, and there was suddenly FII interest. Do you notice fund interest? Are we reaching that tipping point? 
Alita, uh, right now, uh, cross-border interest uh, is going to go down a little bit uh, uh, currently because uh, they will go to uh, more uh, safer known market. That's what typically happens in uh, when there's a, a downturn. Uh, interest rates uh, like uh, what Gitambar and Chalish have been talking will uh, go for uh, developers unless the government does uh, something uh, drastically uh, fast. Uh, we believe uh, last few years we've seen the FDI uh, uh, into real estate go up uh, to around 5 to 6 billion, used to be around a uh, billion uh, uh, before 2014. And it had touched a uh, five to six billion uh, mark. We believe that's going to come down uh, again uh, uh, this year, uh, and that's the that's the need of the art which uh, the government needs. Uh, no, Ramesh, that means there is a lot of foreign equity or capital. I won't call it equity. There is, I mean, with the uh, global central banks uh, being extremely benign in cutting rates and printing dollars or uh, euros or yen, as the case may be. Uh, we are, we have a fairly uh, beneficial uh, or, uh, uh, you know, liquid global environment. So are you expecting that, you know, there can be people who will come and fund, uh, say, real estate uh, uh, home dweller, home dwelling, because home buying in India can only go up from here. We are seriously under-owned in terms of homes. And therefore, do you see long-term interest? Uh, and can the government do anything about that? Absolutely, uh, good point, uh, Lata. So, uh, if you look at the Indian uh, uh, real estate market over the next three years, if you include everything from EWS, LIG, MIG, all that, you need eight to ten crore units over the next uh, three to four years. Now, to build that, you need uh, hundred lakh to uh, hundred and fifty lakh crores uh, is uh, required, and the government should go all out to uh, make sure. Even if you look at uh, rural housing today, the penetration is just nine percent. Uh, GDP to uh, mortgage to GDP growth rate is 9% compared to 60% in US or uh, UK. So I think there's so much the government can do to uh, attract these funds. Even before uh, the stimulus packages which the various governments had announced, our calculation showed that just the dry powder, these real estate private equity funds are sitting on is $330 billion is what they are sitting on currently, which is uninvested. And here we are saying at $6 billion itself we are happy. Uh, if that kind of money can uh, come in. So there's a uh, lot of potential if the government can kind of uh, make things more clearer, help the sector. I think a lot of this uh, money will uh, come in from newer sources of capital. If four years back, we were sitting here and I said, Canadians would become the biggest uh, investors in uh, Indian real estate. We would have all laughed. But today, Canadians are the biggest investors. There's a lot of capital from Singapore, from Middle East, from Japan, yes. from Korea, all waiting in the wings. And if they can find the right kind of opportunities, uh, they would uh, eventually come in, Lata. Uh, Mr. Gitabar Anand, I'll give you the last uh, word. And give us a synopsis of one, two, three things that can yeah. be done immediately. So what I would say is immediately to instill confidence in the home buyer so that the home buyer doesn't have to pay EMI for the next three, four months where post which buyer will have job security and pay security. What can be done is that suppose there's a property for one crore rupees today which is under construction to be completed in the next three years. The home buyer can put up a deposit of say 25%, say 25 lakh rupees. And then the HFC can step in and say, don't pay any EMI or interest for the next 24 months. So if they're disbursing 75 lakhs, so let's say they're disbursing uh, 70 lakhs in the next two years, which, because the property will be closer to completion then. Then the interest at 7.5% uh, on a deferred payment will be approximately 10 lakh rupees. And out of that 10 lakh rupees, to pay for that 10 lakh rupees, my home buyer has already put in a deposit of 25%. So that 10 yes. lakh can be adjusted in the first 25, uh, 24 months from that 25% uh, which the home buyer has put up. And yes. at the end of the tenure of 24 months, the HFC can refinance another 10% uh, to my home buyer so that he gets his money back. And then the loan continues as a normal loan because after 24 yes. months, my home buyer will have a good job and a good pay scale. Why I say this is because prior to the COVID situation, the developer was doing the subvention for the home buyer. But let's okay. be realistic. Today, the developer does not have the cash flow to do a subvention for the home buyer, but the HFC does. So the RBI will have to come up with something of this sort. Secondly, on the supply side, as MSMEs have been given a liquidity window of 3 lakh crores right. with a 
sovereign guarantee, all we ask for is that a small window, maybe not 3 lakh crores, maybe less of this 3 lakh crore is not being taken up by the MSMEs because they are not really yeah. aggressively borrowing. So a part of this can be diverted to the real estate sector on a case to case deserving uh, projects, wherein yes, yes. on your existing line, you are sanctioned a limit with a cap. Maybe you can give a 20% on existing line with a cap of 100 crores or 50 crores yes. or whatever you want, but with a sovereign guarantee. So my risk averse lender has the confidence yes. to actually give me my last mile funding, which is a desperate need of the R today. So okay, these two industry. things are done, they will really, really go a long way in okay. kickstarting. Yeah. All right. Uh, that uh, appears to be a lot of ideas on the table. And besides that, we have ideas which we got in the previous episodes of uh, uh, the credit discussion on real estate, uh, the tax incentives and, uh, uh, you know, loan restructuring, which together should be able to at least help us tide over the most difficult part. And then, you know, growth will bring its own dividends. Uh, we only have to do the handholdings till uh, the economy turns. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kitabar Anand, uh, Mr. Puranik and Ramesh Nair for joining me in this discussion.